Hi, uh, welcome to my 2017 uh, buck field dressing video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to show you here in just a bit about how to field dress a buck. This is my biggest buck I've ever killed, nice 7 by 4 And to start out with, uh, we're going to take a caping knife here. I'll make a little incision just to get started. And uh, then I'm going to grab uh, my field dressing gloves. And uh, you can buy a nice field dressing kit from Walmart or a Bass Pro or any sporting goods store, typically for a couple bucks a pair. And you'll start with an inner glove, which is these uh, long uh, lining gloves here. And uh, those go up your arms, obviously, to keep the bugs and the fleas off and any uh, excess blood and whatnot off your clothes and off your hands. And then there, you have a pair of surgical gloves, and those will uh, go over, over top of those. And uh, you'll be able to uh, have enough sensitivity to be able to work through the process. And uh, those are just a nice aid to have. And they also includes a, a bag for the heart and the bag for the lungs that comes with the kit. And here we are with my caping knife we're going to start in and make a small incision. Just take your time, go nice and slow. And you're working just through the hide and uh, trying to get just underneath it. And uh, once you get through that first layer, um, I'm going to go over here and I'm digging around trying to find my skinny knife. And I use, uh, my, the knives I use are made by Nice Velasca. Uh, nice, they're a little spendy, but they are very nice to last a lifetime. They hold a great edge and they're actually my favorite uh, knives I think I've ever owned. And uh, the one kit comes with a cleaver. This is a skinny knife here. It's got a nice gut hook on it. And the best thing about the gut hook is that you can skin right up against the uh, stomach lining, stomach wall. And as you go along, it, it's very useful because uh, it, it's the likelihood of perforating the bowels, it goes way down if you're using a skin and knife. And uh, I like having, having good tools. So you're just, I'm, now I'm just skinning up against the side of the stomach lining itself. And there's a layer, um, the subcutaneous tissue it's called, and between there is fat. And you'll see the stomach wall there. Eventually, I'm going to cut through that stomach wall. And uh, again, just take your time. You're going slow. You're not trying to, you know, this isn't a you know, race. You're just trying to do the best job you can. If you perforate the bowel, you'll know because you'll have the, the uh, inners, uh, inner parts of the stomach and any half-digested stuff that comes out. It's gonna, it can uh, be a mess. It smells bad, but it also works. It'll taint your meat if you're not careful. Don't keep it good and clean. So I'm just skinning uh, up against the side of the stomach there. Uh, that's the stomach lining. And as we cut through here, I'm going to go just cut just a little bit, poke it nice and slow. And as soon as I perforate that stomach wall, you'll notice because all of a sudden you'll see that stomach will just start to start to push out. <coughs> this deer's been dead maybe an hour at the most, but you can see it's already starting to bloat. Um, the deer begins to break down almost immediately, whatever's inside of them, the stomach contents, et cetera. Uh, the deer is not rigged up yet. That will take another hour or two. And uh, so here we are pulling the stomach out. I'm going to reposition the deer a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to see and to, to work on the deer. And uh, it's a lot easier if you have a partner with you to be able to hold, help hold legs and whatnot. Um, right now I'm skinning around the anus. And the anus around the anus there is a uh, real fine, uh, soft uh, piece of skin. It's got real short hair. And you're going to cut a half inch or an inch all the way around that anus. Uh, and you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to free uh, the anus intact with large intestine and you're going to skin that all the way through that cavity there. Now I'm reaching the air side here and we're going to skin that all the way down the middle. And uh, when you reach in there, this buck's bladder was actually empty so there wasn't any urine in it. But if uh, you're skinning in there and you come across the, the urine sac and uh, if, you, uh, if you perforate it, it'll be a mess. And it's, again, the worst part's not... The thoughts of it, it's actually the fact you don't want to taint your meat. So I'm going to keep all that stuff off the meat as much as possible. Skin along here is kind of working our way around, trying to uh, skin that anus and that large intestine all the way out, trying to get that free. Now we're going to skin down a little bit farther so we get full access to it. The bladder's right in there. Now we're going to work on that stomach. I'm reaching up against uh, the diaphragm. Now the diaphragm is a very thin muscle wall. It separates the uh, the stomach and all the other lower intestines uh, and it separates it from the heart and the lungs now if uh, you this deer is double lung shot so there's no damage to the organs down below if, if you uh, got shot a deer you want to get this cleaned up real good wash it very nice and get cleaned up that's a little chunk of the liver i'm not saving the liver on this deer here i'm not a big liver fan um, i did save the heart and uh, actually saved the heart and the lungs for an experiment for my kids a uh, homeschool project but the heart actually pickled it. It turned out all right. A little different flavor. It tasted kind of like a pickle, actually. And so there's some more uh, viscera. 
And as you go along, you're just going to work that stomach out. You're going to reach up in there, and you're going to get a hold of that esophagus. <clears throat> in a moment here, you'll see me. I'll reach up in there. And this is just a piece of intestine. I'm tying a knot in it. And I tie that knot on there to keep all the guts, uh, all the the, uh, the poop, et cetera, inside the actual large intestine. I'll skin that out from the anus end a little bit later. Now I'm reaching up in here. I'm going to cut the stomach off at the esophagus, the lower end of the esophagus. And you'll see here it'll drop off in just a second. There it is. Stomach's out. Uh, basically everything out of there is kidneys. Now I'm going to pull out some fat and some other miscellaneous organs that we don't need. And a little chunk of liver and the fat. I just kind of scraping that out, any blood or any other mess. A lot of fat. This buck is pretty fat. I think he'd been stuffing himself on acorns, it looked like. And uh, he had good fat all the way around him. Uh, deer fat's not really good for eating, so I didn't save any of that. And there we are. So we're going to reach up in there. And now I'm cutting that pericardium out. And it just, that piece of it, that pericardium goes all the way around uh, the rib cage up towards the back. And you're just going to skin around that. Now, if you heart, heart or lung shoot a deer, uh, sometimes there'll be a large quantity of blood that will kind of gush out. If you're not ready for it, it'll kind of freak you out a little bit if it's first time or you're not, just not prepared for it. And so now I get the pericardium out. I'm going to reach up in there, and I'm going to grab the heart and the lungs all in one piece. And you're going to cut that off at the uh, throat there, the upper end of the, uh, like the lungs. There, there you go. There's a the heart and the lungs all in one package there. And I'm cutting that loose, getting that all the way out. And there you go, the larynx. You're going to take that. That's the lungs and the heart. I'm going to toss that in a bucket. And we're saving that for a science project, and we're going to eat the heart later on. And so now I'm just going to cut the rest of that pericardium, or not pericardium, the uh, diaphragm out. And uh, we're going to get rid of all the blood, everything in there, rinse it out nice, get that nice and clean. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to, there's the heart. I'm just checking for the heart. There we go. We got it. And uh, now I'm going to take my bucket of water. And if you use water to rinse out the deer, just make sure that you don't let the water set in there. The, the water setting in the deer actually can co contribute to spoilage. Uh, if it's nice and cold like this water is, it'll actually help uh, cool the deer off a little bit faster. So now I want to lift up the back leg again, and i got to tie it up because uh, I don't have a partner with me here today. I'm just out by myself. And uh, this day, it's about, I think it's about oh, 50 degrees that morning. We're... Uh, and it's uh, October 28th, end of the last Saturday of the deer season. And uh, so I'm gonna hold that leg up. Now this deer, I actually um, wet aged it. And I had I take the, took the deer home, skinned it out, and quartered it, and put it on uh, the, pot, the, bot, the uh, quarters in uh, three separate coolers. And I put ice on top and below of the quarters and the meat. And uh, every morning I check it, I left the, the valve of the bottom of the uh, coolers open with the water, let the melted ice run out, and then restocked it with ice every day. I did that for eight days. And uh, that nice at wet aging process, this deer turned out phenomenal. I mean, it's literally one of the best eaten deer I've ever killed, I think, very tasty. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm still working on that anus, trying to get that skinned out. I'm pulling on the edges of the anus, skinning around top and bottom of it, just going around and around, just going very slow. I don't want to perforate it. So I'm He's pulling it both sides. That's the, the large intestine that goes out through there. And it's working it out. There it is right there. Now it's coming out. And uh, got that just about done. And push the deer back in the truck. And I got some cleaning up to do. And removing any extra little scraps. I do save all my uh, meat scraps that are worth saving. I put them in little uh, sandwich bags and freeze them all up and use them for dog treats throughout the summer when it's nice and hot. My dog really enjoys nice cool snack when it's uh, 110 degrees out here in California. And uh, so I'm finishing up that anus there, getting that cleaned up, removing all the organs, and just getting that, that pelvic bone opened up so it'll cool off a little quicker. And about a 40, 45 minute drive down the house and I'll string it up on a gambrel, finish the skinning and quartering process. Still working on the anus there, I'm almost done. Just about got it out. You'll see here in a second, it comes loose. Once it comes loose, you just reach in there. There it is, that's the test in there, it came right out. And uh, clean anything else out, and there you go. So you want to get all the guts out. You don't want to leave any guts in there because they will spoil very fast. Uh, if it's anything above mm, 48 degrees or so, things they'll they'll break down in a hurry, and you really do not want to spoil a, a good deer like this. If you're in the high country and you got cool weather, you could hang them. I would recommend taking the skin off and putting bags over them, tying them good and high. You don't want to lose your uh, deer to a bear or something other uh, critters. And uh, so I'm cleaning up all the little guts there, getting that last little bit of that anus out and got a little, any, any extra deer poops or anything else, clean the hair off there and uh, cutting out the bladder. 
Like I said, this bladder was already, it was pretty empty. There was a sex organ there cutting around the end of that. Pull that out. And we're just going to toss that inside there, let the foxes and ravens have at it. They'll be in there by the hordes before you know it. And uh, so we're going along here just trying to get that last little bits of fat and any other parts of the organs, kidneys and blood, et cetera, all that, everything, all the mixture's no dirt or any other fecal material. Wash that off there. And uh, so we're just about done here. And uh, a little more skin and trying to get that cleaned up good. Got that done. And... Uh, Still working on it there, looks like. So yeah, this deer <clears throat> takes it took about a half an hour just to, to uh, skin. I was going a little bit slower than I normally do. I was trying to get a good video. Hopefully it turned out decent. You can kind of see what's going on. And uh, now if you are going to have the deer cape for a mounting and make sure that you don't split it. You can see how far I split it right at the base of the uh, ribs. You want to uh, leave enough hide well back of the ribs and you're going to split it from the backside uh, the, the top of the deer all the way up, make a Y up to the horns. Uh, and depending on your taxidermist, you may want to leave the uh, ears unskinned. Be very careful if you skin around the lips and the eyes. You don't want to poke any extra holes. And uh, there you go. Some, this is a real easy cleanup. Inside out, tie knot, toss them in the bucket, and we're done. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, my nicest buck ever. And uh, real stud, great tasting deer. Have a good day.